Hi, my name is Tina Zillman. I'm the director for Skin Rejuvenation Clinic and the founder and developer for Advanced Rejuvenating Concept Skincare Products. Chemical peels are really underrated. There's a lot of new equipment coming out that says they rejuvenate the skin, make the skin fresh, make the skin smooth, reduce wrinkles, but really chemical peels do all of that. Some of the stuff that we see on the internet tends to be more dramatic. The heavy peeling, the discoloration that happens from peels. Peels have actually been around for a very long time. They help smooth the skin, soften the skin, and give an overall texture that you can't get from a lot of different treatments that you do. Peels are very beneficial, so really consider them when you're looking at your arsenal of skincare. Another thing, when you are doing a peel, I will have patients and clients jump out of the bed because they'll go, I don't want to peel. Peel just means exfoliation. Exfoliation can be a lot of different things, from the tiny cells that slough off to actual physical peeling. And we're going to take you through all those types of peels today. But peels don't have to be physically peeling peels. A lot of what we're going to teach you today is going to be how to use peels to just soften and smooth the skin out without any downtime. Makeup can be worn right away and the skin just looks fresh and smooth. They have no downtime. I'm really applying the peel to avoid the eye area, so I'm never running the brush over the eye area always going around the skin and last into the nose and T-zone area where the sensitivity occurs a little bit quicker than the outskirts. Anything left over, I'm going to go ahead and run down her neck and into her decollete. You know, too many times we find that we peel the face and there's a big difference here, but down through here, they have all the damage. So this actually shows when they wear their V-necks or any low cut shirt. So we want her neck to look good as well. So we're gonna peel that as well. I'm basically just tapping to take her mind off any of the kind of tiny little ant biting that she might be feeling. I'm also feeling for the skin. If you massage this into the skin, it's gonna go deep. So you have to watch it so they don't get very sensitive. So it's just a tapping motion that I do and a little bit of a slide. And the reason why is I'm looking to see maybe where her skin's still rough and where her skin's real smooth. Where it's real smooth, I know the peel is doing its job and exfoliating. Where it's rough, I'm gonna leave it there just a little bit longer. You can get all the way up underneath the eye area here. You just want to avoid the eyelid itself. And if they have permanent makeup on their brows, you want to avoid that area too because it does tend to eat away skin cell which will actually soften any type of permanent makeup. If they have earrings, if they have nose rings, you want to make sure that they take all that off because you don't want to get the acid in there because the acid will actually eat a little, eat away a little bit at those holes or those piercings in the skin. So we're gonna gently take it off, keeping in mind her skin's a little sensitive at this time, so you don't wanna to be too rough with the sponges. You wanna be very thorough in removing this peel. A lot of times it'll get stuck here, up in the nostril area, um, or the sides of the nose, and then you'll get some crusting in those areas. So I suggest that you re-cleanse the skin, just to make sure we get those areas. This will neutralize the, pe the uh, peel. Re-cleansing the skin will neutralize the peel. We don't have to use fancy neutralize solutions. Water will do just fine. And I am using the melanin cleanser on Christina's skin because that helps brighten the skin. It's got a little colgic acid in it, which will just keep the skin nice and bright as it suppresses the pigmentation and melanocytes in the skin. Christina's skin's in great shape. 
you're going to see this flushing tiny bit of redness to the skin. This is exactly what you want after a peel treatment. That's the exact coloration. Some people ask how long to leave the peel on. You know, one to two minutes is what we suggest because it is a, a lower pH and it's not buffered. But really you need to watch the skin. You need to watch for redness. You need to watch for anything that has to do with frosting. And hopefully we don't see frosting on this video because frosting is over processing of the skin with any of our alpha hydroxies. Our beta hydroxies will frost, but our alpha hydroxies should not frost. Peels and acne. It's what to choose and which peel to choose by looking at the client's skin. You're gonna see a lot of different conditions such as dehydration on someone with acne, whiteheads, blackheads, cystic acne, some old staining and discoloration due to, due to old acne scarring. So today what we're gonna do is kinda of go through the different peels that you can pick. You can pick a lactic peel, a glycolic peel, a salicylic peel. You really can't pick a wrong peel for this type of skin. I'm gonna go and choose the salicylic peel today and the reason why I'm gonna do the salicylic peel is for a couple of reasons. Cause she has some old staining, so it'll help break up that discoloration. It also helps control oil. So where she's kind of a little bit oily and broken out, that'll help heal that area um, and also control the oil. So now we're gonna go ahead and start with our treatment. Um, I'm gonna pick a wash according to her skin. So I'm gonna do the clarifying wash this has a little bit of salicylic acid in it to help control oils. I don't need very much. There's no, there's no sodium lauryl sulfate, so you won't get a lot of foam. You'll get a creaminess. We're gonna just go ahead and wash your skin. Nice and clean. The washes have a little bit of enzyme in them as well. So they tend to eat any dirts, oils, and makeup off the skin, giving that skin a nice glowing look. Also, you don't need to use a makeup remover with it because you're getting all of that off in one swoop of cleanser. The mistake people make is using too much cleanser and then they've got all this cleanser all over the skin. So really you just need about a dime size. You saw me emulsify it with water and then apply to skin. Remember we talked a little bit in some of our other videos about lifting the sponges up. You always wanna go one sponge then the other sponge, never lifting both sponges off the skin at the same time. Okay, she's nice and clean. You can even see from the sponges how clean that skin is. When you do your peel, the skin has got to be completely dry. If she was extremely oily, I would go ahead and do a little bit of the clarifying toner just to break down that oil and prep the skin for the peel. But I wanna make sure this toner is dry before I go ahead and apply the peel because you can actually neutralize your peel solution and not get the full effect from it. Okay, and you can even see on this how clean that cotton swab is. I mean, that's how good the, the cleansers work that have the enzymes in them. Okay, she is done. You can speed up the drying of the skin by just taking Kleenex or a four by four gauze, just pressing the skin dabbing that dampness. Perfect. You notice she has a piercing over here on her ear. I'm gonna make sure I avoid any peel in that, in that area because I don't wanna get peel inside that piercing. Now I'm gonna go ahead with the salicylic acid. Again, you only need about a nickel size of this acid. You can apply with a brush, a synthetic brush, or what I'm gonna do right now is use a cotton tip. And the reason why is because she's got a little bit of acne congestion and I don't wanna spread any more bacteria. So everything I use is gonna be disposable. I get a nice 
thin coat all over the skin. Again, I'm avoiding her eye area. I'm not dragging the peel over her eye because you can drip as you're pulling that over and then you've got to have eye wash very close and very quickly. So I'm not going to go over that eye area. I'm definitely going to apply gloves because this peel's a bit strong. It's got a pretty potent pH on it. It's a beta hydroxy, so it's a neutralizable beta hydroxy, which makes it pretty neat. Um, you'll start to see the skin slough off and the peel come off all at the same time. I'm gonna tap because this has a little bit of a bite to it. I'm not massaging, I'm just simply tapping, letting that dry. Okay, grab my sponges, plain water, rinse them out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove that peel. Look at all that sloughing. What's really neat about this is if she had heav heavily congested skin, like with a lot of blackheads, you would see a lot of the tops of those blackheads just kind of dissolve with this peel and kind of come right off. Again, this is the salicylic peel. I would not do this over the lip area, so I'm just avoiding the lip area, avoiding the eye area, and just going with the rest of the skin in the T-zone. You can see how much brighter her skin looks. You see the stimulization right here? It's stimulated. You're getting a lot of oxygen to the skin. When you're getting that oxygen to the skin, that helps fight any type of bacteria as well. So that's your added benefit. Now, if she had a lot of open lesions, I would avoid going directly over any open lesion, such as a cyst that was open or bleeding. Um, that's, that's just too much, and you can actually make that cyst a little deeper. All right, all of that peel is off. Just to make sure, we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit more of the cleanser. That's the clarifying cleanser. And we're gonna make sure we got all that peel off. It's good, we didn't get any frosting. Sometimes with acneic skin, um, you get a little bit of frosting where they uh, have used like a spot treatment or if they've used a little benzoyl peroxide that's overstimulated their skin, you'll see a little frosting. What I mean by frosting is a white film over the skin. And that you do not want to scrub off because that, that has to heal on its own with a little post-op balm. Now after this treatment, since it's so aggressive, you definitely do not want them to go home and use their acne products such as the benzoyl peroxide wash, the 5 or 10%, any of the spot treatments for about 48 hours. A light salicylic acid they could use, but, that, but you don't want anything aggressive like retin-A's, retinols, or benzoyl peroxides.